You're listening to the King of the Fourth podcast, offering in-depth analysis on all things Boston Celtics with your hosts, Jim and Mike Quigley. Hey, welcome everyone. We're, we're back for another episode of King of the Fourth Quarter podcast. This is Jim Quigley with my brother, Michael, and we are here to talk about a struggling Celtics team, particularly since the All-Star break that really has had cracks in the foundation since January. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of things that I think are uh, factors at play. Um, uh, crunch time minutes, some um, curious coaching decisions, uh, defensive uh, uh, inefficiencies. When you talk about free throw rate, transition, pr- penetration into the paint, um, and an identity crisis. You know who they are. Uh, they were a team that snapped the ball, uh, you know, with effectiveness early in the year and we're able to create uh, shots off, um, you know, getting penetration themselves and getting the defense into rotation, using creative ways to get guys, guys going downhill. Um, and they, that was, um, you know, taken advantage of by making a lot of shots. And, and then you, they kind of changed who they were as and became more of a defensive team when Rob Williams returned. And now I, I think they're at a spot where they're neither. Um, there's time to fix it, but the time is running short, and there's concerns on how to do it and with uh, certainly the Milwaukee Bucks uh, rising to a level the Celtics are not right now. This is all of a long way to saying um, if you're concerned, I, I think you should be, and where they're going um, is going to be determined uh, when the, probably within these next 30 days. Uh, Mike, with that, that's my opening thoughts, and I, I want to dig in more into you know, some of the stuff I I touched on in a little bit, but that's where I am right now. Yeah. Well, um, kudos to the Milwaukee Bucks. I think it's 27 to 30 games they've won since the beginning of January. So the Celtics have lost more games since the all-star break than Milwaukee's lost since, uh, since the turn of the new year. That's, that's why we find ourselves in second place. What really stood out to me was the second quarter against Brooklyn. You're up 29 points at the end of the half. You're up 11, but really it was that last like four minutes of that second half where it was this layup after layup after layup. And the Celtics just three or four feet behind the guy wide open layups at the rim. And to me, Jim, we can talk about a lot of things, but I think there's a real lack of intensity sometimes with this team. And what that Brooklyn game showed me wasn't that Brooklyn had a miraculous comeback it showed me that the Celtics have a, an ability to turn it off. And I think that could come back to haunt them. Uh, And I think it will come back to haunt them. That's what scares me the most. And we can talk about minutes down the stretch with Derek white, and we can talk about snapping the ball and playing hard on defense and, and, and talk about the coach. But at the end of the day, it's on the players and the leadership on this team. And it's got to come from Jason Tatum and and Jalen Brown playing hard now, moving forward every night and setting the tone. Because in that second quarter, in particular against Brooklyn, Tatum wasn't playing hard at all. If you watch it in particular, it's just not not into the game. And then another trend that we, we may not have enough time to talk about today is basically the amount of 40-point scores against the Celtics almost on a nightly basis since Indiana. And if you go back and look at the box score, some of those guys were at 38 points. But that's an alarming trend to let a guy go off night after night. And it's happened every game except for the first loss against the Knicks and our last win against Brooklyn. I mean, against Tom, sorry, against Damian Lillard in Portland. So, um and again, I think something like that speaks to a lack of intensity, not not doing what it takes, not playing as hard as it takes to make those stops. And that's alarming to me. Uh, there's there's some things that I am very concerned. I don't think they're a championship level team. I think they're a team that's going to lose in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I, I think it goes beyond just playing hard. I, I, you know, the Brooklyn game, I think. They didn't play a full 48 minutes with um, force on either end, and I think you're correct. I, I I thought they played hard against Cleveland in their loss. I thought they played hard against Brooklyn, I mean, against the Knicks in their loss um, at home. I, I thought they broke down, um, you know, just 
with how they, they're supposed to play the game of basketball. That's the best style for them. I, if you look at the end of that Knicks game, how many times did Tatum come up the floor and, you know, either one pass or no pass three point shot? You know, there was no, there was no attempts by the offense at times to to get the Knicks in rotation to get the ball going downhill. You know, earlier in the year they would run a lot of God on um, God screens or God screens from Smata Brogdon on Tatum or Brown to get them going downhill and get the defense in rotation. They would do that a lot in crunch time. You would see Marcus Smart at the post at times, um, which always drew an advantage for them, not necessarily a shot from him, but getting, you know, help to come and and him finding the open man. Um, You would see a a lot of different things like that. I I mean, what you would, what you were seeing against Cleveland is they were going up and screening with Evan Mobley. What, what, what does that do for you? You know, and they were playing hard, but you're exhausted and you're, you're switching and you're getting the switch to Evan Mobley. Like that, that's, that's just not playing smart. So you, they need to do both and then, and they're not. And, and I, I do think some of that comes down to Missoula sensing that at different points, using the time out you're going to lose before the three minute mark. I mean, that's a larger discussion, but I, I, I think it's both, Mike. I, I think there's been games where they they haven't given it the max effort. I thought when they came out of the All-Star break against Indiana, I thought there were times in that game where, you know, there were major letdowns effort-wise. Uh, the Brooklyn game, certainly, there were major F- letdowns effort-wise. Um, but when I watched the Knicks and Brooklyn game, I, I, I thought that was more execution. I thought that was getting away from who you were um, and what's best for you offensively. And and then on the defensive end, you know, how how many times are you going to let the other team shoot 10 or 15 more free throws against you? How many times are you going to get constantly beat off the dribble and, uh-huh. and go into rotation yourself? How many times are you not going to switch with force? Where, where instead it feels like they're just backing off. You know, you talk about guys getting 38 points. It's because they're coming off the switch and they're already going downhill, whereas last year – they switched, and you couldn't get downhill. And, and I know sometimes it's from Scholar out there and Hauser, and, and that makes it more difficult. But it isn't like that all the time. Um, I, I, I just I see this stuff, and I, that's why I say I think there's an identity crisis here. I, I don't look at them and say they're a great defensive team, or I don't look at them and say you know they they'll have some bad shooting nights. But man. They, they, they're going to get you in rotation and they're going to get open looks whenever they want, which they're capable of. That's the thing that's so maddening. They're, they're so capable of that and they don't do it. Um, and it's, you know, you saw it with Cleveland too, where Smart was just trying to force it downhill. It would There was no action to get him downhill. He's just trying to force it into the middle and then he, there would be nothing there and he'd turn around and just pass it to no one because Cleveland didn't have to do anything. They just needed to be in help position. You didn't do anything to make them work. And I, I'm i just, you know, the Portland game was, you know, was kind of a gift because Portland just stayed in the zone and they didn't really have to do anything to get open shots. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you watch tomorrow night's game against Atlanta, Michael, that you, you talk about guys that can go off. You know, Trey Young is fully capable of getting into the paint and, and causing havoc. What are they going to do about it? You know, and you should get whatever shot you want against Atlanta. Yep. Are they going to be able to do that? Uh, like, if they lose tomorrow night, but they lose on all open shots, I can go to bed fine. You know, you, you lost the game, fine. You know, but you, you, it's because you missed shots that were good shots. That that hasn't been happening. Yeah, and they're not winning games when they're missing shots now either. And I feel like that's been a trend this year. When their three-point shooting's not on, it's like they they just fall apart offensively. They stop trying to move the ball. And that's that's a problem too. I they're they're getting killed at the free throw line because they don't really go to the basket at all, as you're as you're pointing out to. So you're making some good points there, Jim. It is an identity crisis. I'm not sure how you fix it. I think that. 
he's got to figure out his rotations now enough playing around with guys minutes, especially the big guys coming off the bench. I think he has to figure out who the backup bigs are and just stick with it. I think that would help. Um, and they have to figure out a way to slow down runs that other teams have. The Celtics have shown an inability to stop runs, whether it's scoring or making a stop. They were up. We know what they were up against Brooklyn and they were up against they Well, let's say it, they were up 29 against Brooklyn and went down 16. They were up 14 against the Knicks and went down 11. And mm-hmm. then they were up 16 against Cleveland and blew that lead. And I know everybody's going to say, well, Tatum was out. Maybe it would have been worse if Tatum's playing. We don't know at this point with this team night to night right now. So what, what's going on? How come they can't stop runs? What's going on? Like, it's just like, it's got this vibe of the first half of last season. Uh, they're under, they're at or under 500 since the all-star break. They have to, they have to lock in. This is the time. Everything you're saying, they have to lock in. They, they're too good to be playing like this. And it's extremely disappointing. I, I really don't even know what to say about it right now. It's really frustrating. Yeah, it's, I, I think yeah. the cracks have been. I think the cracks have been there. But what's been, you know, resilient about this team up until this point is, you know, the shooting went and the defense picked up and they somehow won nine straight when their offense was ugly. You know, yeah. I, you know, you remember that Golden State win. You know, before the All Star break, injuries happened, but their offense started popping again. You know, the mm-hmm. ball started moving. They started getting downhill. They started getting really good looks. You know, they lost a lead in Milwaukee, but they lost a lead because they were missing shots. You know, it wasn't the same thing. as like I, I heard a com- couple of comparisons to that in the, the Cleveland game. To, to me, those are two different games. In Cleveland, they were just running into walls because they weren't doing anything offensively at the end of the game. In Milwaukee, they were just missing shots. Like, again, you can live – I think you live with that. And even that, even with Cleveland, yeah. even playing that way, you were at the free throw line with no time left and you blew it. And that's yeah. happened twice this year, basically, to the Celtics. Their first loss against the Knicks this year, they were at the free throw line and they blew it. Like they're finding ways to lose these games and it's just frustrating. Well, I didn't think they found ways to lose these games before the All Star break. I thought they won the vast majority of these games. You think of all the close games that they ended up finding a way to win, uh, mm-hmm. particularly against good teams. It happened a lot more often than not. Um, and, and they were, they seem to have, they seem to have figured out how to play down the stretch, even if it was ugly at times and they, they got wins. It's changing now. Um, and it is look a lot more like what we saw early in the season last year, since the all-star break. And, you know, on one hand, you say it's a six game sample size. But on the other hand, there were some bad habits and cracks that you saw since January, even though they were winning. And so those bad habits and cracks have really, you know, they've become into, you know, huge gaping holes, no longer cracks. And the bad habits have been more the norm instead of, you know, figuring it out. And I I don't necessarily know where this is going to go now and that's the thing that's most troubling to me is that um you know one hand you could look at a six game sample size and the other hand it's there were there were some concerns even if they weren't prevalent all the time there were concerns of which way they were going to go and I, i think if you had a healthy rob williams you can fall back on being this defensive team. You don't know if you're going to have that. And so they they need they need to play with more force on defense to make up for that. But more than anything else, they need to get back on track offensively. Yep. Uh, they, they have to get back on track offensively. And maybe you're right. They, maybe that's more of an effort thing offensively than I'm giving it credit for. Maybe that's understanding what you need to do and not doing it. And but I, I just – that's my concern. And – I, I'm also concerned, Mike, if I'm just being blunt about it, and I, I think you should be, and it's maybe it's not fair to say this because you don't know everything, and you know it, it is. A, but I am concerned that Missoula might not be the guy to get him out of this. I am concerned when I watch these games and it, and the offense gets stagnant, and you're going to lose the before the three minute timeout anyways, or he two call timeout, it. and you're not calling it just to remind these guys of what makes. The Celtics good. 
you know, and you, you see the trends happening. You certainly saw it at the end of the game in Cleveland. You could feel it. You know, they were getting tied. And the thing that drives you crazy about that game, they were doing all the things you wanted them to do earlier. You know, they were running yep. the dribble drive handoffs to Jalen Brown. He was getting downhill. They were finding open guys. The guys were making shots. The second quarter, that continued. They missed shots in the second quarter, but it was good basketball missing shots. Third quarter, they got back to it. And then the fourth, their legs were going. And that's when you got to you know, use those timeouts and remind them of what makes good Celtics basketball. And I, I, I just get concerned. I get concerned that he doesn't sense that. You know, I felt like the game needed Derek White. Jimmy, he does the next game, and I, I just don't think he senses that sometimes. Yeah, and I, that, that I, I agree. Concerning. I, I don't. I, I don't know where it's going with him, but it feels analytical. I, I, I feel like he operates from what he sees pregame on a computer or talking to his staff about, you know, the best way to win based off of the stats with the amount of threes this team takes with the amount of timeouts, he doesn't call with the amount of adjustments that don't happen with trying guys uh, off your bench, whether that be Derek white at the end of the games, I I feel like it's the way he's using Muscala and Hauser out there together, even though defensively it just doesn't work. I, I, I think that he goes into it with his, with his game plan in hand and, and makes no adjustments. Yeah, I I, I, I I don't know if I'd take it that far that he doesn't make any adjustments. I, I think there's been times during the year that, um, you know, you, you, you've you seen different subs come in in the second quarter that didn't play in, I mean, the second half that didn't play in the first half. You saw different ways to free up Tatum and Brown. Um, but I, I do... I am concerned that when this thing's snowballing downhill, his lack of experience, does he, does that come into play that what he knows what levers to pull, what timeouts, when to call them, what substitutions to make down the stretch Um, that feel for the game that, you know, a coach that's been around for 10, 15 years in the NBA, you know, has, you know, that he just does not. And, um, I'm not seeing the other thing, Mike, with the, with the Doka last year. You saw – I still don't think he was great at it by the end of the year, a lot of that stuff. But you saw you saw a steady improvement all okay. season long. I, I'm not feeling that improvement here from Missoula. Um, and, and, again, maybe I'm not being fair. Um, and, look, he could turn out to be an excellent coach, you know, down the line. You know, if he's 33, 34 years old and doing this and they put him in this position, there's something there. And, but what's unfortunate for him, or fortunate however you look at it, is his first job as a young coach, there isn't room for error for him. There isn't room for those trials and tri- tribulations. So it's um, it, it's definitely it should be a concern for people. It, it, it should be a concern that whatever message he's sending them right now is not hitting home on the, the way they need to play to be effective or he's sending them the wrong message one or the other but since the all-star break it is not hitting home yeah so it's a big road trip coming up for the celtics where i think a couple of weeks ago we were saying you know there's games that they can take off and i still think they have to play that way to think long term but i want to see them playing with some urgency even when they, when they sit guys i think they can be creative after the Minnesota game, you could probably sit Tatum and Horford, other guys against Houston, and still win the game. So I still think they can keep guys fresh, but they got to win these games. I, I know they're on the road, but most of these games are against teams they should be a lot better than. And yeah, you're and seeing I, I, Milwaukee and Philly do it. You're seeing Cleveland and the Knicks do it. Like it's time to turn it on, man. It's time yeah, to and it's be it's it's beyond urgency too. I, I think there was urgency against the Knicks and Cavs. I, I think it's being smart. It's like, um, oh, maybe it's the same thing, Mike. Maybe urgency and effort, some urgency effort in smart basketball is all wrapped into one. Um, so I, but I think and it's everybody point, like, like yeah. Grant Williams coming off the bench against Portland and just being, oh, what was me? I didn't get to play, so I'm just going to chuck threes. Well, we like, might need it, a whole podcast about him. Uh, yeah, but it, it's everybody. They're, they're people have to know their roles. Uh, I love Marcus Smart, but his assist numbers are way down since he came back from the injury. 
And some of yeah. that, is, you, you brought it up, Tim. They're not running good sets for him to, to be put in that position, but he's also walking the ball up off misses. And not yeah, running no, some, of it's, some of it's on him. It, you know, there was yeah. a great, there was a great shot. I forget who put it up, but you know, when they finally did get downhill late in the game against the Caps, he was wide open for a three. Remember the three he missed from the the left uh, with about yes. three? You look at the screenshot. If he just looks over to his right, Derek White has no humans around him. It's one more pass. And, and you're either – Derek White's either going to be able to have a wide open three or he's going to get them in rotation and be able to get downhill. I, it's just seeing – the game that way, like they were seeing it earlier in the year, it's it's become very forced instead. And when you play very forced, it becomes almost selfish, even if that's not the intent. And, and, and they got to get back. They got to get back to who they were, because you can't rely on Rob. I think we we've, we've learned that now. You cannot rely on him to help your defensive re- rebounding rate, because or to help you on the defensive. I mean, part of the reason they got so much better defensively when he came back is because they became such a much better defensive rebounding team. And you've mm-hmm. seen what that looks like when he's not there now. They've really struggled with rebounding the basketball. I There's a lot to be concerned about. But since I'm a half guy, you know, glass half full type of guy, Mike, I I will say this. The talent is there. And there's still enough time left in this season where they can figure this out. You know, that they can stay at this two seed. You know, I don't even care about getting the one seed anymore. I'm not sure it makes that much of a difference. Or enough difference to try to go all out for it, I guess. But they can figure this out. And they can get back to playing Celtics basketball. Um, But there has to be a, a concerted effort to do that from them and you know and they have to especially on the offensive end play with that force and that um you know kind of effectiveness and imagination to you know whether it's got on god screens and got up tatum screens or dribble handoffs or getting some out of the post to get these guys in rotation instead of just you know the ball sticking you know, one or two passes, and then I'm going to drive without any screen, or I'm going to screen the best defender on the team to come pick up, you know, Jalen Brown. It just, they need to be better at it. And and if um, they don't spend the next 14 games, whatever they have left, trying to figure that out, uh, they're not going to have enough time in the playoffs. And and you're right, you you know, their sailing will be the Eastern Conference Finals or worse. And so that that's where we're at right now. They can figure it out, um, but there has to be a want to. And there's been enough of a trend right now to be concerned about whether they will or won't. And if you if you're Brad and if you're Brad Stevens, you have to be a little worried right now that they better figure it out. Because your window in the NBA is is small. And if it crashes and burns this year, I there's some concern about where this goes. So uh, the time is now. They they have to figure this out. This is the year to do it. And they can still do it, Jim. They have the talent. But they got to play the right way. They got to play like NBA veterans and not young kids. They got to play the right way. Or they're not going to, they're not, or it's going to end early. So we'll see what happens. This is a big road trip. I think road trips can help NBA teams when your competition isn't. You know, the top of the Western Conference, it's the middle of the Western Conference and the bottom. So let's start catching our rhythm a little bit, and hopefully it'll carry over into the playoffs. Yeah, that's that's all you can hope for right now. And um, it's certainly capable. And there have been – the last thing I'll say, and i, I, I got to run my – but there have been stretches. Now, I don't think there's been stretches quite like this. But there have been stretches where they've lost three or four in a row, and then all of a sudden they've kind of gotten back to Celtics basketball. and it's. You know, it's triggered them positively. Um, a game like last night in Portland or two nights ago, whatever it was now, even though they didn't show up, just be able to get into rhythm of some things they used to do, which they did do, can sometimes trigger that. So, you know, to be the optimist, that's what you hope. Um, yep. I, I think 
I think tomorrow night in Atlanta is, is kind of a sneaky important. Like, how are they going to handle Trey Young? And are they able to get the shots? They absolutely should. Um, those are the two things I'm really watching for. And I, I think those things will be will be telling on how things are going to go down the stretch. All right. Well, everybody, enjoy the game this weekend and have a good rest of the week.